Greetings again in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Have they made you guilty coming to you this morning from All Wally Ministries here in Alpha Vista, Virginia? We do thank God for you joining us this morning at our Sunday school hour. Uh, we are alone this morning. We do have uh, some of our church members here this morning, our family and friends, and we do thank God for that. But wife had to uh, take care of some family this morning. Sometimes that happens, and, and God expects that to be the right thing to do. But she's not with us this morning. But we're going to have an opening hymn, and then we'll get into our morning message. Hmm. I should have picked one out, shouldn't I? I should have picked one out. Excuse me. I was trying to find the right song, but somewhere my right song didn't come up. We get like that, don't we? Yes, sir. Birthdays, birthdays, birthdays. I know that God, my God, a God is good. I know God, my God, God is good. You know he brought me out of darkness, God is good. Come on man. You know God, my God, God is a good. You know that God, my God, God is good. Said he saved my soul. Then he brought me out of darkness. God is good. Well, you know he guides my every footstep. God is a good. I said he guides my every footstep. God is good. You know, he got my every footstep. Then he saved my soul. And he brought me out of darkness. God is good. Then he put food on my table. God is good. I said he put Food on my table, God is good. I said he put food on my table, he got my every footstep. Jesus saved my soul, and he brought me out of darkness, God is good. And then he made a way. God is a good. I said he made a way. God is good. Well, he put food on my table. He put shoes on my feet. Well, he got my every footstep and he saved my soul. And he brought me out of darkness. God is good. Well, you know, he healed my every sickness. God is good. I said he healed my every sickness. God is good. I said he healed my every sickness. He put money in my pocket. He made a way out of no way and he brought me out of darkness god is good i said god is good 
God is good. Amen. God made a way, but he is so good. I didn't have my wife with me this morning. I got a little slow, but God is still good, isn't he? Is there a word from the Lord? Our scripture reading this morning comes out of Numbers 10th chapter, verses 1 through 9. Old Testament book of Numbers, 10th chapter, verses 1 through 9. Our scripture read this morning, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver, of a whole piece thou shalt make them, that thy mage use them for the calling of the assembly, for the journeying of the camps. And when thou shalt blow with them, all of the assembly shall assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And if thou blow with one trumpet, the princes, which are the heads of the thousands of Israel, shall gather themselves unto thee. When thou blow an alarm, then the camps that lie to the east part shall go forward. When thou blow an alarm the second time, the camps that lie on the south side shall journey, uh, take their journey, and they shall blow an alarm for their journeys. But when the congregation is gathered together, they shall blow, and ye shall not sound an alarm. The sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow the trumpets, and they shall be unto you as an ordinance for throughout your generations. And ye shall go into war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you, and then ye shall blow an alarm with your trumpets, and ye shall remember before the Lord your God, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. May the Lord bless the hearing and reading of his holy and righteous word. You know, somewhere in the midst of us growing up, we parented, we were parented very well, and, and we had many things that our parents taught us to respect, and when it came to talking about the birds and the bees, now, that, that was a whole different subject. The birds, we didn't talk about the bird nor the bees, and neither one of them come up. I remember telling us about to be careful in school and, and be careful when you're on the bus and talked about protection. I remember mom and them talking to us about that and we didn't know what they were protecting us from, but when you go out the night, use protection and they were telling us that. And I was just wondering, if I look back, I don't ever recall us talking about abstaining. We always talked about being careful, but our parents really didn't talk us about being abstaining abstinence, stay away from it. Sex and sin wasn't seen as bad as being caught. Y'all understand what I'm saying? They didn't tell us not to go out. They just told us not to get caught or pregnant. That's what it means when you get caught, you get pregnant, eh? They said, so don't, so instead of us being talked about as staining, we were subliminally told that we should go out and sin, but sin safely. <laughs> oh, y'all get in there? So you, you get it to go out and sin safely. So instead of being talked about from a staining, we got this message that to sin safely so you won't get caught. Use condoms, birth control, IUD, something, but just don't bring no baby up in here. Did, did, have y'all ever heard? Don't bring no baby up in here. No need of telling you not to sin, but up in here, don't bring no baby up in here. No need of telling you not to sin, but if you do sin, learn how to sin safely. Now that was the boyfriend-girlfriend situation where pregnancy was the possibility. Now we got the new generation, this new generation of self-identification. So now we don't know what to tell our children. We don't tell them what to watch out for. And sometimes it becomes hurtful. We don't have boyfriend, girlfriend. We got girlfriend, girlfriend, boyfriend, boyfriend now in our generation. And somehow, as a church, we're silent because we don't want to intimidate our members because every family got those questionable situations that is happening. So the church has no, no answer. The similar mantra for the generation that, that they know you to go sin, but if you go sin, they tell you to go sin safely. Same thing they told us. In other words, there are some sins that people are saying that you are all right to do now. For sure, sin has gone to the point where uh, it, it, it'll change your lives, it'll affect you without you being involved with it. So sin does that. It used to be that sin brought with it certain fear that the hand of God was going to descend from heaven and all of a sudden smack you and smack you and knock you down. I was scared to sin because I was wondering what God was going to do immediately after I sinned. 
So we thought of that. At one time, people feared God's judgment just because they were thinking that way. But at one time, sin included, thou shalt not. Ain't it right? In the vow, thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. So they were made up. But later on, sin now is known as a social ill that, that we call crime. Not sin. But sociologists and psychologists, they are going to act because then sin has become a disorder. You don't sin no more. You got the illness. But the problem is they can't fix the illness, nor can they affect the sin. You know? But we got a problem names in schools and single parent homes, and, and we blame the problems on government and blame it on everything else rather than blaming it on what? Sin. The tendency now is to smile when somebody said they did some sinning. <laughs> Have you noticed they said, man, I did this. I got drunk last night. <laughs> and we think it's cute. But uh, it's, 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 it's something that you're going to eventually pay for later on that you think is cute today. Your kid acting cute going to embarrass you one day. But if you would have took care of that thing while it was still young and fresh, that then you would have to worry about it today. Ain't it? So, Mom, when I was being cute, my mom, when I was being cute, had an answer to that situation. She smacked the smile off my face while I was thinking I was being cute. That right there would end that for the next time that I tried it. So, see, sinning is, it, it, we, somehow we think it's a joke when people do some things. You know, people do bad stuff to other people and we laugh at it sometimes. We find ourselves getting involved with it, laughing. And people embarrass other people. We laughing at it and don't realize that the object of that could be us the next time, ain't it? You gotta understand that. But listen to me. I want you to know that sin is what? Still sin, no matter how you label it. God's word has never changed and it will never change. And it's time for the church to be accountable and tell it over the hills and over the mountain and everywhere that sin is still sin. So today I want to talk to you on the subject it's time to sound the alarm. It's time to sound the alarm. Let us bow. Father God, we do thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, we ask now that you touch your lips through your dear servant. Lord, me down in the deep well of that salvation. Let me speak those things you have laid upon in my heart so that now that I can speak now to your people. Give me power, that Holy Ghost power, that I might reveal now those things you have laid upon my heart. Lord, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. Yes. You know, sex, S-E-X, that was created in a life that has blood according to the Bible. Everything that has blood in it has the capacity to do sex. Because that's how we what? Procreate. And the Bible says, so God created man as an image and an image he made him male and female into them. And they would be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So gender and sex was created simultaneously to what? Populate and repopulate the earth. So sex has a purpose in society for doing this. That's the only way you come in the world. God made man, woman, Adam and Eve. Everybody else was born. Everybody else had a father and a mother. So sex is part of the equation that God used to put populate and, 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 and to repopulate the earth. But then, then sin entered into the world and man's sexual lust caused him to stray away from God's creative order and follow their own lust. Romans, first chapter, verses 24 and 25. For, for God gave them over to uncleanliness of their own lusts of their own heart to dishonor their bodies between themselves. They changed the truth of God into a lie and they worship and serve the create creature more than the creator who blessed from the other. Amen. He said, because of sexual rebellion, Paul goes on in verses 26. For this cause, God gave them over to themselves. See, what God will do, God will let you do what you want to do. If you're big enough, bad enough to do anything, we serve a God that is good enough to allow you to do whatever you think you want to do. But in that, you got to deal with what? The consequences thereof. So he said he gave them over to their own vile affections. And then he said God gave them up to themselves to do what they wanted to do unnaturally. So let me make it real clear. Let's make it real clear. This ain't going to be friendly. So let, let's talk about what is real. You, you, you can take two guys and two girls 
and two guys and two girls can be a partner. Y'all understand me? Mm -hmm. But it's still sin. The partnership is not sin. You can have a male friend as long as you don't cross the line. You can have a female friend as long as you don't cross the line. God got limits. And within the limits and standards, he tells us to live by these limits and standards. And anything outside of the limits and standards, there is no equation to work things out. <laughs> anybody can live with anybody they want to live with and that ain't no sin but the problem comes when you start dealing with sex see sex becomes the the, 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 the equation that causes everything to go against what God's creative order God created things to be and to procreate and sex between a male and a female of the same species we got to get that right too because we got folks now want to adopt the dog and adopt the we got all kinds. So anything that you could ever think or imagine, folk doing it. So what it's telling you, God created a divine order, and when you operate within the divine order, things are happening according to his will. But anytime you operate outside of the divine order, you expect things not to go the way that they should. And and in all of us, and and and, and my family, your family, their family, everybody's family it have, have, have people that, that, that seem to not understand the creative order that God has established. See, the thing about it, I, I love each and everybody, all peoples of the earth you love, and you treat people with respect, all people with respect, no matter what their sexual orientation is, but you still have the duty as a human being, to let them know that that's not God's divine plan. It, it, it's not. And we have to be compassionate to our children and our friends and our neighbors, and we have to learn to be able to speak to people in love so that you can be able to help them and not drive them away. You can't drive people away and help people. you got to have people welcoming enough to come in and to be able to give what, uh, what you, you have to give, and that's love. All we have to give is love. But we have to understand this. See, you can't replenish and multiply the earth without following God's creative purpose. It, it, it'll, it'll never happen. You can't produce any offspring. You can't multiply or replenish the earth. The only you can do is you can recruit. See, that's what I hate about anything that's not natural. Because anything that's unnatural, you got to recruit. you got to recruit people to come in and what they do is they recruit people and then they start telling their story. And once they tell their story and you begin to believe their story, and then you start leaning toward their understanding. You know, the Bible says, what, lean not into your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths. We got to understand that. We got to understand that. Look at Paul, 2 Corinthians 3rd chapter, verses 3 through 6. I tell you, this is hard. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good and haters, traitors, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, and such you turn away. For this sort they creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins and lead away in diverse lusts. Now, I hate to tell you, he says silly women, but we got a whole lot of silly men that be led away by the same tricks. So this is not gender relative. Anybody can sneak in and turn your mind away from what you know is right and start to thinking what uh, it is to please them. See, they can't reproduce, but, but so they creep into houses with their carnal consciousness to recruit others to accept their way of thinking. Now you think it's all right to do what you do because uh, 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 I think of the word they call human reasoning. Human reasoning will make you believe anything. Because if you can add it up in your head and make you think it's right, now I can convince somebody else that it's right. So that's what we're caught up in. You know, we're the product of this sexual revolution of the 70s and the 80s, of 60s and 70s, and we got caught up into desensitizing sex. We didn't have no sensitivity for sex. We, we just thought it was just something you did or, or, or didn't do. 
And, 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 but we got to realize that it was an evil. We don't understand how this social impact on, on these things affect our bodies and affect our mind. Born in a broken household has impact, doesn't it? And, and you might not think it affect you, but somewhere down the line, there's a scripture that says God brings it back to your remembrance. There's something coming to your mind of that abuse. That, that, that hurt, that, 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 that harm, that, 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 that mistrust. Have you ever had somebody that, that you thought you trusted? And then they showed their mistrust? How do you get it back? It's not easy, is it? Because you got to be able to trust that person again that proved to you that what? They can't be trusted. So you got to understand that. So things happen that you got to somehow turn around. We, we, are, we are bombarded with lifestyle commercials on television now. It, it, even in the medical world. It, I ain't never, I talked to my sisters yesterday. Have you ever went to the doctor and told the doctor what you want? But the commercials on television said, if you're suffering from, from uh, Crohn's disease, tell the doctor, try Humira. <laughs> Humira can, Crohn's disease, IBS, and, and, and now they, they got the psychological problem. They got one pill that, that they can give you that, that, that affects, it's just like Botox. Mm -hmm. Botox is, is, is used for your skin, but it's also used for migraine. Now, what, once I give you the migraine, then what do they do with the skin? See, we don't know what things are doing. So things are done out of order. See, the same thing when, when you are uh, how allow things to come into your your gateways of your heart. What are those? Your ears, you know, your eyes, you know. See, God, the devil used our senses to be able to, to, to turn us away from the things that God wants us to be. Because the only thing you got to do, all right, go back to Genesis. Go back to Genesis. And, 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 and Adam and Eve were told not to eat of the fruit, the tree of good and evil. What's the first thing Eve said? It looked good for food. It looked good. I saw. It tastes good. So our senses, uh, sometimes the devil use it to satisfy our senses. Now what is sex? Satisfaction of the senses. Because you ain't got nothing in your pocket when you leave. <laughs> Man, I had a good one. You had a good what? <laughs> you you can't quantify it. You can't you can't scale it. You know. But what we say, cause it's our senses that we are measuring. It has no quantifiable uh, number that you can measure. But our senses got what thrill. And the devil knows that any time that I can excite your senses that is outside of the, the prescribed order that God has established, now I got you. Because now you're saying God made a mistake. God made a mistake by making me a woman. God made a mistake by making me a man. God made a mistake by making me a human. You got people now putting bones in the noses, want to be cats and, and, and having antlers and putting these bone inserts to have these little horn-type devilish crazy stuff. But the thing about it, it's no different than you listening to propaganda and then changing your life based on the propaganda, not knowing when I look in the mirror, if you really, see, there are several things that you have choices. And one of them is whether you're a man or a woman. That doesn't affect. Your choice doesn't affect it. I wake up one morning and say, I want to be different. And the only thing I got to do is, is when I take an evaluation of the of, of, of what I'm made of, what I thought didn't change what I was made of. I was made a man. <laughs> and if I think any different, it doesn't change the plumbing. Let me be it. You all understand what I'm saying? So, I can't understand. I can understand being... Uh, discriminated against because of my blackness. Because I can't change that, ain't I? I don't have a choice. My racial orientation, 
I don't have a choice. My sexual orientation, I don't have a choice. There are some things in life that you don't have a choice to be who you are because of the fact that you have to accept the prescribed order that God has made, and that prescribed order is who you are. And I know some things can happen in your life that get you confused about certain things, but we have to understand that self-identity is not your choice. You can't choose to self-identify whoever you want to be. My point is, what's happening in the world today, our churches, our pastors, our members, and our parents, we are dealing with situations where we have children that are dealing with identity problems, but we don't know what to say and what to do. All of us. You know what the Bible said? Let the tares and the wheat come up together, and I'll do the dividing. See, what we try to do is we try to what? Try to divide. But we don't know enough to divide. And then we know we can't divide without hurting. See, I respect everybody that has a lifestyle choice, and, and I do that. But I will not allow you to tell me that that's a self-definition that is the reason why you're doing it. No, that, that can't be. See, God doesn't do that. See, respect every human being, but also... You got to blow the trumpet. And we talk about sounding the alarm. You got to let them know that this is not an acceptable lifestyle. You can't let them go along because no who's going to hold you accountable. Yeah. You choose to be whatever you want to be, but I'm going to tell you what's right. And, and, and ain't nothing wrong with that as a parent. See, sometimes as a parent, we, we don't want to tell our children what's right because we don't want to hurt their feelings. But what you need to do is say, it's wrong and it's on you. It's wrong and it's on you. You have to let them know that. Because if it's wrong and if it's not on them, who is it on? You. It's on you. You have to do that. Respect every human being. But the thing is, you got to sound the alarm. Ezekiel 33, I, I got called into the ministry. He says, son, oh man, I have set you to be a watchman of the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word of my mouth and warn them for me. Preaching in the pulpit is not to make you feel good. Preaching in the pulpit is to warn you of the outcomes of your decisions that you make that is against the will and the word of God. That's all we need to do. That will save you, but the thing is, allowing you to uh, uh, go along with what I know is not a, a, a according to the will of God, that's going to be on me. I'm going to have to deal with that. You know what he said in the scripture? He said, you're going to receive many stripes. Why? Because you knew the truth and didn't tell it. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold you accountable for everything that they did because of the fact that you knew the truth, but you didn't tell anybody. See, we got to be truthful to, our, to, to people that, that are in the world today. So textbook. So sit down and watch the destruction of society, and then we sit there and let it go along. But you need to blow the trumpet. You need to let them know that there is an accountability that is going to be coming in their life. So I'm calling upon every soldier in the army of the Lord to what? Go get your trumpet and start blowing the trumpet to sound the alarm. So the Bible is explicit on how we should live and, and it tells us certain things that will happen and certain things that won't happen. Second, First Corinthians 6 chapter verses 9 through 11 he said, Know ye not that no unrighteousness shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, or adulterers, nor adulterers, nor infeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners, nor shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such of them as you were, he said, you was just like them. You was running around. You was living all kinds of way. He said that what happened is you came out. And you were sanctified. So once you become sanctified and no different, you got to be able to let the world know that those type of things are not acceptable unto God. But he said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away and all things have become new. See, God calls us uh, so that we can come to him 
and become new, not to stay the same. I, I, I preached last Sunday, change or stay the same. You got to change or stay the same. You ain't got no other option. If you don't change, you're going to be the same. But if you do change, you're not the same. So you got to change or stay the same. You're, you can't stay where you are and grow because you're going to be still a little small plant trying to live in a big world. See, a small, have you ever, and I, I, I raised God. I got a little piece of corn that big. But I got another piece of corn that big. What happened to him? Huh? He's stunning. See, you get your growth stunning if you don't what? Listen to God's word. You, you can grow with his word, but his word will not make you grow un unless you eat it. Food will not make you grow unless you partake of it. You've got to partake of the word. See, see, some of us, should I say most of us, were just like all of our children that we're trying to bring them back into alignment. Because we were out of line too, weren't we? The Bible says you were just like them. So why, why, why can't you understand the situation? All of us have sinned and all of us have come short of the glory of God. And none of us are made so right that we can't serve, that we need to ask God forgiveness for, you know. But we need to understand that. But the thing is, we have a duty. He said, Paul says, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient and all things are lawful for me. But I will not be bought under power of anything. Anything that you make a decision to do, you can allow that thing to become overpowering in your life. And that's food. That's, that's relationships. You know, you can't let your wife separate you from God. You can't let your husband separate you from God. You know, the God that's supposed to bring you together is not the God that's going to divide you. Because if that God that divides you, it ain't the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's a, it's a God that you made your God. And, and those things can divide us, can't it? Huh? And, and sometimes we as partners in a relationship, we kind of make ourselves little gods, ain't it? That person has to bow down to me. That person has to give in to me. That person always has to. You see, that means that that person, you, you're not doing what's right. You're doing what's necessary to please that person. See, husbands shouldn't do that to the wife, and the wife shouldn't do that to the husband, ain't it? We should be able to do things that is what? Right. Not leaning toward one another. See, the Bible says here, Know ye not that the bodies are members of Christ? Shall I not take the members of Christ and make them members of a hobbit? So, God forbid. So, I give my body to Christ, but on Saturday night, I give my body to Christ on Sunday, then on Saturday night, then I give my body to Christ on Sunday. <laughs> what did he say right here? Know ye not that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? So you, you got to understand that. But so you can't be the Christian and expect to hurt the kingdom of God carrying sinful baggage from the past. See, you got all your baggage on and then you expect to get there. No, we're not going to get there. You know? So our first question is, why are the two trumpets? Y'all forgot the text, didn't you? Why are the two trumpets? He said to Moses, two trumpets of silver, one whole piece shall be made of thee that I may use them for calling of the assembly and for the journeying of the camps. So you had one company that will call them out and the other company will, trumpet will call them to war. I'm going to have one to lead you, you know, to safety, but the other one is to lead you into battle. So you have to know which trumpet is being blown. As we blow our trumpets, we got to know which trumpet to blow. Because one trumpet could drive your children away. But the other trumpet could what? Draw them. So we got to know how to blow. See, most of us don't know how to blow the trumpet, ain't we? We don't know how to talk to each other. I got accused of that this week. In my house, you don't know how to talk. But we do that, don't we? All of us, it's a lesson of learning that we have to learn how to talk to one another. 
We got to be able to load blow our trumpet with the right sound that we'll be able to draw people rather than driving people. So don't blow your trumpet to drive your children further away. They've made some decisions that are wrong and they are living lifestyles that are not acceptable unto God. But don't blow the trumpet to what? Blow the trumpet to. And then you got to know what trumpets you're blowing. Y'all hear me? Look at the text. And when they blow with them, all in the assembly shall assemble themselves at the door of the tabernacle. And when you blow with one trumpet, the princes will come, heads of thousands, and gather themselves together. And when you blow the alarm, the camps will lie on the east, will go forward. When you blow the alarm the second time, the camps on the south side will take a journey, and they blow an alarm of their journey. But when the congregation are gathered together, you shall blow you shall not sound an alarm. The sons of Aaron shall blow the trumpet, and they shall be unto you an ordinance forever throughout all generations. And you shall go to war in your land against your enemy that oppresses you, and you shall blow an alarm with the trumpets, and you shall be remembered of the Lord your God, and ye shall be saved from your enemies. See, we got to learn to blow the trumpet to save our children. Sometimes, Blowing the trumpet, telling them to move on might be necessary. But sometimes blowing the trumpet, telling them to gather is necessary. We got to blow the trumpet in order for it to get the right results. Know the trumpet. What trumpet are you blowing? Are you drawing trumpets to scatter or are you blowing the trumpets to gather? See, you got to do one or the other. You're going to scatter or you're going to gather. Huh? So know which trumpets you're going to blow. And then, as we close, these trumpets were used to do what? Call God's people together. You need to blow the trumpet to call people together, not blow a trumpet to scatter, but to gather. And this is what the Bible, the gospel is for. And we are called together. And it is learn the word and we grow in our spiritual walk each and every day. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves, pray, seek my faith, turn from their wicked ways. He said, Then will I hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and heal the land. See, our duty as believers is to sound the alarm. Self identity, rebranding yourself away from God's design, is why God is warning Solomon before the dedication of the temple. It's time for us to. Tell our children it's time to turn. Turn around. Our duty as believers is to sound the alarm. This uh, Sound the alarm and let them know it's time is turn away from your wicked ways. God is explicit. He says, humble yourself, pray, seek my face, and turn from your wicked ways. The issue is the boldness that we don't have. See, our kids are bold. You got that right, Amy? Yeah. They bold. But thank you. It's our boldness that we need to learn how to be able to go out and let them know what the truth of life is, what we need to be humble, and it's much easier to humble ourselves than to let God do it. See, God's going to bring you down. You can bow down, or he'll what? He'll bring you down, eh? The Bible says, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. So we got to understand, humble yourself before God before you have to, you know, humble you. And it's sad to get 99 years old and God got to humble you. You should know better by then, huh? You've been around long enough. See, what we need is to be humble. And like I said, it's much easier to humble yourself than for God to have to do it. The alarm goes out to them that, that's in time so that they can respond to turn. Don't wait till our kids and our family members get to the point where they get so old they can't turn. Let them turn while they're still young. He said, train up a child in the way he would go so that when he get old, he won't depart. You got to put it in them while they're young. And the alarms go out in time so that they can respond. And this is why we should what? Blow our trumpets now while they're still young. Don't wait till they get old. Look, they too old, they can't hear the trumpet. You can blow, 15 years old, too old to blow the trumpet. Because you should have blew the trumpet when he was six. So that by the time he gets 15, when he hears the trumpet, he do this. 
hey, my mother did this. And when my mother did that, my head automatically, because I knew it was coming. But the thing is, if I don't have that reverence for my parents, then I won't respect that they got something coming my way that's going to fix my situation. See, we got to have that. So the alarm needs to go out. So I posted on Facebook, and I said that God doesn't change, but God creates change, doesn't he? He creates change in all things, in us. So he's progressive, and when he's in our life, he expects us to be what? Progressive, ain't it? God has not changed, nor has he lowered his standards. His redefinition, rebranding, self-identity, whatever you want to call it, you just need to understand, you need to do a spiritual DNA check. Oh, uh, you see what I said? You need to get a spiritual DNA check. And that's what the Bible is. Be it uh, advancement within the ministry or sending out missionaries or advancing our own personal spiritual walk, we got to understand that's what God gave us his word for. We also need to remember that while we're in battle, that God is always with us. Huh? I, I, I think I preached about it a few. Lord, help me recognize the battle. See, sometimes we're in battles and don't know we're in it. And then sometimes, you know, that, that we're fighting and we're not in a battle. We, we're just fighting because we're fighting. But we got to, we got to, in order for you to recognize what to fight, you got to understand what fight you're in. So you need to recognize the battle. See, there were times in, of joy and gathering, and this is what the word of God is for. It's to be shared with others so that we gather together, read his word, study his word. And then Paul writes, so we are servants and ye were free from righteousness. What fruit were you in these things that you are now ashamed? See, for the end of those things is death. But now being free from sin and being servants of God, ye have your fruit unto holiness. And in is everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So Paul looks back and he lets us know that we were made free by the gift by Jesus Christ paying the debt. Self-identity, ready definition to justify our behavior will only lead to death. And that's what we got to understand and let folks know. So one of the greatest dangers other than blaspheming the Holy Spirit. So what is it? It's rejecting the grace of God. Ain't it so? He died for us. He offered us his life. So the only thing we have to do is receive it. And we reject that more than anything else. Ain't it? And your fruit is not to continue to live in sin. But your fruit is to live so that others might see Christ in you. When they see Christ in you, now you become a living sacrifice. You become a living testimony. So that if people look at you and say, if God can bring you out, I think he might have a chance to get me out. Huh? So our lives become the living testimony. Your children, if God can do that for you, I believe he can do that for me. So that's the type of life that we got to live before our children so that they can see the Christ inside of us. And when they see Christ inside of us, we need to be able to sound the alarm. Let this arm go out. Blow your trumpets for the Lord. Don't allow the blood of the lost souls to die and be on our hands. You know what he said? He said, he told me, he said, blow your trumpet. If you blow the trumpet and they do not heed to the call, the blood is on their hands. He said, but if you fail to blow the trumpet, mother and father, if you fail to blow the trumpet, the blood of those kids are on what? Your hands. Because God told you to what? Blow the trumpet. He didn't tell you to try to figure out where they're going to be, how the end is going to be, how it's going to turn out. No, your duty is to what? Sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. So let us forget the lesson of the true trumpet. Let's not forget. So there is a time, say, we need to blow the sin, but there's a time for us to blow the trumpet to what? To gather together. So let us know which trumpet to blow and how to blow it so that we can be able to minister to our family and to be able to bring our family back to God. That's what's the duty of our uh, each and every mankind is to sound that trumpet to the glory of God so that our people can come back to God. So let the trumpets resound. Sound the alarm. 
Tell it over the mountain, over the hill and everywhere that Jesus Christ is Lord. And then it's time for us to be able to sound that alarm so that God won't hold us accountable. Because he's going to ask you one day, how did you do with what I blessed you with? Huh? And you're going to say, well, I don't, I don't know. You know, I, I, I did the best I could. Well, you did the best you could. But what you could have done is do what I gave you to do. And then you'll have to worry about doing the best you could. Do what I tell you to do. Walk in obedience to God's word. Sound the alarm. Let us bow. Father God, we do thank you, Lord. Hopefully today we've given some encouraging words to each of us as parents, as, as Christians, as men and women of God. Let us sound the alarm. Our children, our generation is being wasted away. But the church somehow seems uh, comfortable. We, we've gotten uh, complacent. And we are not uh, being about our father's business. Telling the world that Jesus Christ is coming again. He's coming again looking for a church without spot or wrinkle. And what we need to be, we need to be about our father's business. Telling our children and warning them that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. God bless you and may heaven have a smile upon you. We'll see you then. Come back next week and we'll see you on, uh, we'll be on vacation next week. So we'll be spotting in and out. We might be hitting you on Friday evening on Sunday morning, but we'll be traveling our 45th anniversary going to Gatlinburg and uh, celebrate with the wife 45 years. And uh, thank God we're still here. Amen. She ain't killed me yet. Thank you. And I ain't killed her yet. So Amen. that means that we're good, ain't it? God bless you. We'll see you again on next week. Be blessed.